Thank you. Good morning. So we have two beautiful speakers also today for the second day of our seminar series. The first speaker will talk about social choices. You know well that in life we are faced with so many social choices. The most popular at present is the presidential vote, presidential choice that we will be making in the 2016 election. Choices. We will actually look at processes in which different and conflicting choices of members of a group are consolidated in the single choice of the group. Our first speaker will talk about the social choices theory. <coughs> she finished her bachelor's degree in mathematics, major in actuarial science and statistics and master's degree in mathematics at the La Salle University, where she has been teaching for 12 years. She is a PhD candidate in mathematics and is very available to make a social choice for her partner in life. So dear mathematicians and educators, let's now call on our first speaker, Ms. Michelle Dan. So that's the aim of social choice. 
have a big group, you want to meet one decision. Okay. But one way to come up with that decision is through voting. Okay. So voting is the main vehicle by which decisions are arrived at in a democratic society. So uh, let's uh, discuss some terminologies first. Okay. So we have here what we call a preference ballot. So a preference ballot is a ballot on which each voter ranks all eligible candidates from first place to last place with no time ranks. Okay? So we're going to have an activity. Okay? So since uh, this is a uh, very interesting topic, so you can change this. When you are in some other students, maybe you can ask them, uh, if it's an author, so you can give the um, famous uh, actors of yeah, Daniels, Alden, and then you can have um, James Reed, and then you can ask them to rap, right? So it will depend on your audience. So in this case, since um, we are all um, at our voting age, and this is a very interesting topic, so we're going to do this. So I'm going to... Uh, uh, my law faculty will be giving out the ballots and then we're going to wrap the ballots. <laughs> 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 Most is So this shows 
how many times each possible ballot was submitted. Okay, so for example, okay, so we have here, so that means this is the order. Rank, uh, rank, first rank is A, second rank is B, third rank C, and then fourth rank D. So that means, uh, this six means there are six members of the group who voted in that order. So, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, since you have four candidates uh, here, or four, uh, yeah, you have four candidates here, so how many different ways, um, if we consider all possible ways of the ranking, how many possible ways can we have a ranking if we have four candidates? So, this one, okay, so that would be 16. So, but, if you do this in our table, we only have four, so that means they, uh, some of them, the bad, they didn't prefer those type of rankings. So zero, they are, they have zero number of votes. That's why we didn't think we them anymore, okay? Next. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. Uh, this will be something new. Fairness right here, though. Okay, so what are the different fairness right here? I'll start first with the uh, more complicated one and the easier one at the end, okay? So a fairness criterion is a mathematical statement about our expectations for a voting system. Okay? So we have requirements okay, for those fairness criteria. Okay? So the first one is called the majority criterion. Okay? So when can we satisfy what we call the majority criterion? If a candidate receives majority of the first place vote. So what do we mean by majority? That means he gets uh, more than half, so half plus one, okay? So if you have half plus one, then you'll be able to satisfy the majority criteria. Okay, so if you have um, 100 uh, members in your group, so to get majority criteria, you have to get 51 votes, okay? Next, uh, the Condor set criteria, okay? So if a candidate beats any other candidate in a head-to-head -head contest, that candidate should win the election. So that means you're going to pair all the candidates um, into a head-by-head -head count, okay? And then that candidate should win versus others. So let's see if we have four candidates, A, B, C, D. So if we pair A and B, if A will win, let's say, and then A and C, A will win, and then if a, we pair A and D, A will win again, then we have a winner um, based on the color set. Right so uh, let's say if you made a head-to-head pairing, -head, um, okay, head-to-head count, and the winner is not consistent, then you will not satisfy the color set criteria. Okay, we will do uh, some examples later. Okay. So next is the independent irrelevant alternative. So if a re-election is held with the same ballot and non-winning candidates are removed, the previous winner should still win. So the means if you have the last candidate, okay, the least um, votes, and you take away that candidate, the same winner should be um, should be the result. So if that's the case, then we satisfy the independent of irrelevant alternative. Next is the Pareto criterion. So if there is at least one candidate, okay, let's say for example that is candidate A that every other voter refers to another candidate, let's say candidate B. So all the voters would rank A higher than B. Then it should be impossible for candidate B to win the election, okay? So the Pareto position is named after Wilfredo Pareto. He is an Italian economist. Okay. So I think this is obvious, right? If A will always have a higher rank, so it will not uh, be possible for B to the election. Okay, next. Uh, Monotonicity criteria. So it should be impossible for a winning candidate to lose in a re-election if the only changes in the votes were changes that were favorable to that candidate. Okay? So things are favorable to you. So even though we have another re-election, you would still be the um, voting. Okay. So this one are the obvious ones. Okay, so I put them together. These are easy. So all voters should be treated equally. Okay, so I think uh, it's also self-explanatory. And all candidates should be treated equally. Okay. 
Okay, and the last two we have in, uh, every individual prefers a certain option to another, then so must the resulting societal choice. Like for example, if every one of us would prefer candidate A, then obviously the candidate A should be. Free. And lastly, a social choice function should not simply follow the preference order of a single individual while is ignoring all the others. So if we follow that uh, preference of a single individual, then we have a dictatorship. So those are the different fairness criteria. Now, we're going to start with uh, some methods and we're going to check if those methods will satisfy which fairness criteria. Uh, so, we're going now to discuss the voting method. So, voting method is a mathematical procedure that uses data from preference table to determine the winner. So the preference table was a list of the ranking of the candidates. First voting method. So this is the easiest one. We have the majority rule. Okay. So in this method, the candidate which requires more than 50% of the first place vote wins the election. So in this type of method, we're not concerned with the other rank. So we disregard the second, third, and uh, all the remaining ranks, and we just look at the first place rank. So as an illustration, okay, so the first place rank would be uh, six votes for A, five votes for B, four for B again, and two for C. Okay. So if we compute for that, that means A will have six plus four first place rank. So A will have ten votes, uh, B will have five votes, and C will have twelve. Okay. So if we are using the majority rule. Okay, what's the total number of votes that we have? 70. So we have to get more than 50%. So what's more than 50% of 70? 9. Okay. So that means for a candidate to win the uh, by using the method of majority vote, we should get 9 votes. So if we got 10, so that means we satisfy the uh, majority method group. So that means A will be the winner. Okay. So 10 out of 70. So it will be more than 50%. Okay. So <coughs> okay. So I think it's obvious that uh, uh, before we go to that, majority rules is a good method of voting but only guarantees a winner if there are two candidates and an odd number of voters. Okay. So, because if you have more than three candidates, then you're not sure. If you only have two candidates, then people will only have two choices, right? Okay. And uh, aside from that, if you have an even number, so imagine if you have two choices and there are four of you. So, it's possible that uh, two will vote for candidate A and two will vote for candidate B. So, that means you would uh, end up with a tie. So, there's no winner. So, for us, <coughs> Majority criterion, if a candidate receives 
a majority of the first place votes, that candidate should win the election. And for the rule, it's the same thing. That's why we note here that majority rule methods guarantee the process satisfying the majority criteria. Okay, okay. so uh, there's a theorem by Kenneth May. Okay, so what does the theorem state? If the number of votes is odd, there are only two candidates, we want a voting method that never results in a tie. Then majority rule is the voting method that will satisfy the following criteria. Okay, so to summarize, these are the criteria we have here. All voters are treated equally. Okay, both candidates are treated equally and we have more monotonicity. So these are the three criteria that are sure to be able to, to, be able to satisfy. Okay. Next. Okay. So the next one is called the color set method. Okay. I want to discuss this first because we also have the color set criteria. Okay. So what is the color set method? A candidate is a winner when he would, okay, on the basis of the ballot cast, defeat every other candidate on a one-to-one -one contest using the majority rule. So instead of having all of them together at the same time, you're going to use the majority rule, but just two candidates at a time. And if at the end, there will always be one winner, then that would be the winner for the condescent method. Okay, so this uh, method was popularized by Marquis de Condorcet. So he's one of the important things at the voting theory. Uh, don't get confused, when I was searching my uh, talk, there was another color set under social choices, but it's not at all. Marquis, it's another color set also. There, that is it. So, um, just warning you on uh, color set. Okay, so let's uh, discuss. Uh, let's have some screenshots. Okay, so first, I pick uh, B, versus, B versus A. Okay, so what I did here is the ones with the red box, this is the ones where in B will have a higher rank compared to A. And the one without the box, so this one, that means here A has a higher rank compared to B. Okay. So next, what we do is we count. So since uh, B is over A, so B is higher than A on how many votes? 5 plus 3. So that means B wins over A on 8 ballots. While A will win over C, uh, sorry, A will win over B by just seven ballots. So in this case, B defeats A, so that means B is the winner. So but we cannot still make our conclusion because we have to make a head-to-head -head comparison. So that means we still have to compare B versus C and B versus D. Okay, so using the same procedure, okay, so now I'm doing B versus C. So the one with the box, that's where B has a higher rank compared to C. So I, uh, let's see these. So 6 is 3. Uh, sorry, 6 is 5 is D. So you'll have 4 D. So obviously, B will be your winner. And uh, last one, we have B versus D. So, so in this um, box, you have B higher than D. So 6 plus 5 plus 1, then 12. Then again, B is the winner. Um, you would not be able to conclude this conclusion right away, always, because maybe you would be, you would start with let's say A versus C, right? Because you can start with any pair. So if you start with A versus C, then always there will be a winner, right? And then maybe if A is the win, let's see what will happen if we have A versus C, A versus C. So A always ranks higher than C here. Okay, so that means A is the winner. So that means you're not going anymore with C versus any other candidate because C already won. So if uh, I started with A versus C, then my next move will be A versus another candidate. So if I thought of A versus B, then there I'll get my B. I'll start to get B. But let's say for, uh, for some reason you decided with B. So again, you will have a longer solution because if you pair A versus who would be the winner if we take pair A versus B? I think it would be A again. Ah. Okay, so it would be B, right? Okay, so from there, you would again be doing B versus C, or hopefully you'll already be doing B 
versus B. Okay, so uh, this is a nice solution in such a way that uh, I already chose the correct uh, pairing so that we can easily see the winner. Okay, so is this uh, overall the hundred percent method? Since B will win against any other candidate, then B would be the counter set winner. Okay. So obviously, since we have what we call the uh, counter set criteria, okay. So the counter set me method may not produce a winner when there are more than two candidates. So it's possible. So you can show this to illustrate that there will be no winner. So since you already know the method, I'm not going to do this one by one anymore since I want to discuss other methods. So you can just, just you can just verify this on your own. So in this example, there will be no winner. That means in all the pairings, you will have, uh, there will be no one winner for all the head-to-head -head pairings. Okay, so, um, since you have the ponder set criteria, so obviously, the ponder set method will also satisfy the ponder set criteria. Okay, this is what we want to discuss because this is what we are using when we are electing our president, the plurality. So what does this method, or how does this method uh, do? Whoever receives the most okay, first place vote is declared the winner. So um, this is by far the most simple and widely used voting method, and it may require a tiebreaker though. Okay. Now, what's the difference between the plurality method and the majority, the one that we discussed first? Yes, in your majority method, we need to have more than half. So that means 50% of the votes plus one. Okay. But this is a simpler method because you just need the most number. So uh, earlier, hopefully you remember, there was one example where in A got the most number of votes. I think A got six, right? But A did not satisfy the majority rule. But in, if we're going to use the plurality method, then that means Satisfy the counter set criteria. That's the reason why I first 
up the color cell criteria so that we already know how to find the color cell criteria. Okay, so based on plurality, who will be the winner here? I'm sorry. Plurality, who will be the winner? Z, right? Victory. 9 plus 4, and that would be 13. Okay, based on plurality. Okay, let's apply our color set method and see uh, what will be the color set winner. Okay, so let's just go through this. Uh, B wins versus C. Okay, so here's the uh, computation. So B is the winner. Okay, and B wins versus D also. So that means by counter set, B should be, uh, B is the winner. Okay. So that means if you're using the plurality method, okay, it's not you're not sure to satisfy the counter set criteria. Okay. So that's what I want to point out here. So now observe that B has 12 first votes, and uh, this is it. For the plurality method, B will be the, um, the vote. So the plurality method fails the content set. In some elections held using the plurality method, there is a candidate who would beat every other candidate for head to head top, but that's not in the election. So starting from here, I would be asking my student. So you are, we are using plurality to choose our president. So that means he just have the most number of, number of votes. votes. But if we are going to make a head-to-head -head comparison, it's possible that that candidate will not win. So would you, uh, you, uh, I'll be asking my student, can they say that the Condorcet method would be a better method compared to the plurality? So starting from here, we can ask them to think about this different types of method and let them start to realize that in the end, we want them to compare all those methods, okay? Okay, so just a review because I'll be using this. So the independence uh, of irrelevant alternatives. Uh, the problem with this topic, if we didn't use this to your students, there are a lot of new words, okay? So that's why, um, I did this also, so that because most likely you will still not be able to remember what I said earlier. Okay? So independent irrelevant alternative criteria. If a re-election is held for the same ballot and nine winning candidates are removed, the previous winner should still be the winner. So this is what we're going to check, okay? Using the plurality again method. Okay, so um the winner here will be A. The non-winner is B and C. C. So we can take away any one of them, either B or C. C. Okay, so what I did here is, I suppose that C dropped off. Okay. So this is my first default. I took out B, but since C is out of the range, then automatically A will become the second place winner. And then for this outcome, B will be the first place winner, and A will be the so we're just moving them up because we only have two candidates who just have the first and second case. So this will be your table. Okay. Now, based on our new table, who will be the winner here? G. But in the original table, our winner was B. So that means is A. So, so that means the plurality method fails the uh, independence of irrelevance alternative. Okay, but we have to clarify to our students that it's not always the case that the plurality will fail. They're talking about this in general. That if you have a plurality, you cannot automatically say that it will uh, fail. So there are some <coughs> examples that using the plurality, you will also satisfy your uh, irrelevant alternative. Okay, so you can make that uh, additional you know, uh, clarification to that. Okay, so what else is the problem with plurality? Okay, so plurality, a voting, uh, voter voting strategically reasons as follows. If my preferred candidate has no chance to win, then I will vote instead for someone I like less, but who, is, who has a chance to win. I think you can relate to this one, right? If you already know that you really, really like that candidate, he has all the uh, qualities, everything that you want to to, uh, to have as a president, let's say. But if you know that that candidate will not win, you would think, 
Kaya naman yung bottom ko. Kasi if I'll go for here, hindi naman siya mananalo, di ba? So there, there is a strategy there. You will not be anymore picking your preferred candidate. So because of that, you would be thinking of another candidate who you left like, but you think will be the election. Okay, so that's uh, one strategy that can change your vote. So whenever voters vote differently from their true preference, the voting method will be so, for example, here. So, if you see here, right? if this is the, if you know that you will be voting for candidate C, you alone, then you will decide. I'll just choose one and see what will be the effect of your choosing another one. If you look at my example, A and B should have a tie result. But because you did stick with your own candidate, whichever candidate you will choose will be the so that's how um, strong one vote is. Okay. So we have to vote twice. <laughs> okay, so next one. Okay. This one is a little different because we will be giving points to the that. Okay, so it's just not counting. We'll be assigning points. So we call this the board account method. This is named after uh, G Charles the board. Okay. Uh, here comes the contemporary of conversation. So they are the two important things under the okay. So board and health method assigns points in a non-increasing manner to the ranked candidates on each voter's preference list. Let's say given N candidates, so you would have uh, rank 1 up to N, right? Okay, so what you do for your point system is the first place will get N minus 1 points and then Decreasing by one point, so the second place would get n minus two points, and the last place will have zero points. Okay? So for our example, here we have the preference table. Okay, so that means here since uh, six voters voted A for rank one, so how many uh, rank do we have? Four. So because we have uh, four candidates, so our score would be 4 minus 1. Okay, so number of candidates minus 1. So the highest score that we uh, will be giving for the first place rank is 3 points. And then in decreasing manner, okay, 2 points, 1 point, and 0. So since uh, there are 6 uh, persons who voted for candidate B, then that would be 6 times 3. That's why we have AB. And then 6 who voted for candidate B for second place, so 6 times 2, 12, and so on. Okay. So what do we do with this uh, point? We're going to tally them. We're going to total the points. So we're just not going to total the um, the votes, but the points. Okay. So what do we have here? Let's say candidate A. So candidate A here has 18 points plus 5 plus 3 plus 2. So that will become the Borda score of candidate A. Okay? So the Borda score is the total points received for each candidate from all voters that are added. So obviously, the higher the candidate with the highest Borda score will be our winner. So in this case, that would be candidate B. Okay? So, here's another thing to consider for the presidential election. If you will be ranking them, then uh, your choice, other than the first place, will be given also a chance to win. Okay? So, now, they will have uh, three ch uh, four choices. So, you can ask the students again, so what do they think? Will it be the majority rule, the usual plurality, color set, a head-to-head, -head, or would you want to give points? Because to be fair, like if I, I least like letter D, then you have no voice. But if I like letter D uh, to be my second place, then it would have an effect. Okay. Okay. So the last one that I'll be discussing is called the hair system. Okay. So in this method, a winner is determined by repeatedly defeating candidates in stages that are least preferred. And a winner may emerge after all the candidates have been defeated. So, tanggal ka ng tanggal. When there is a tie among two or more candidates. So the hair system was introduced by Thomas Hare in 1861. 
won and is used in, among others, choosing the site of the Olympics, the Academy, uh, Academy <laughs> Awards, and elections in Australia and Ireland. Okay. So speaking of elections, you can also ask your students to look at how the elections are being um, being computed or what voting method the elections is being used in other countries and compare with ours. And so if they have um, another or a better suggestion for our uh, countries, uh, voting method. Uh, by the way, usually the board account, the one that you give sports, you can see that in sports, Right. First place will have ten points, and so on. Uh, so, depends depending on the number of I uh, on the number of teams. Okay. So usually you see that is four. Okay. So uh, let's proceed with our illustri uh, illustration. Okay. So let's just look at in the hair method. First, you just look at the first place vote. Okay. So if you look at here, the one with the least uh, vote is candidate B. Okay. Candidate B has only four votes. So that means we're going to eliminate candidate B. So same as what we did earlier. We're going to take away candidate B. So that means we'll just be ranking three candidates. So this will be the resulting table. So we took away candidate B. So we'll have a new table with three ranks. Okay. So now we're going to use again the plurality method. So based on the plurality, who will be the least, uh, the least, the candidate with, with least vote would be C. So 10 plus 1, 11. So we're going to take away that and take away candidate C. We will have this table and rearrange the <coughs> table. We will have this. And obviously here, we will have the winner, candidate B. So that's the one uh, using the hair system. Okay. Weeks. So actually, uh, I still have two. Uh, I was thinking that I'll have that, 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 have that time. So I did discuss what we call the sequential pairwise. Okay. So this is where the one who is counting the vote can have a say on what type of sequence do you want to have. So if you have four dances, okay, then you can have a sequence of A, B, C or you can have a sequence of B, C, D, A. Okay, and uh, the method is uh, the method is discussed in the book. Okay. So everything that I'm discussing now is just from the book. So you can just uh, further look at that. So that means if I am the one counting the vote and I want to get candidate A, B, then I can choose a sequence such that A will be. So here you can play a strategy so that your candidate will be if you're the one counting the votes, okay? <laughs> and uh, this one, this is a little different, you approval uh, voting. What's different with approval voting? We were ranking, right? Earlier we were ranking. So in approval voting, there's no rank. Uh, usually, oh, in our MSP or not, uh, choosing the board members of our MSP, right? We don't rank. Let's say we need to choose uh, five board members. You just give five names, right? There's no ranking. So uh, that's where you use your approval voting. There's no ranking. You just choose five. And then this approval voting to um, get the winner. Okay. So this is a summary, okay? So of the fairness criterion and the different types of voting method. So you will see there that there's no, right? There is no voting method that will be able to satisfy all your fairness criteria. And there is that theory, I don't know if I have, I'm sorry, I don't have it in the slide, but we have it in your book. According to our own theorists, you cannot find a voting method that will be able to satisfy all those fairness criteria. So, since we have this already, then what can you ask your students to do? So you can ask your students to make a survey on a topic and you can ask the entire class to participate or just some of the members of the class and uh, make their own uh, voting at all. Uh, choose their own voting method or they can do all the voting methods. Okay. Like for example, uh, they can choose between 
Fast food chain, so Jollibee, McDonald's, KFC, Burger King, or they can change whatever they want to. Okay, and then they can make a report and present it to the class. Uh, this is an example for the class of Dr. Nohon. So the students made a survey it's between McDonald's, Jollibee, and KFC versus Walmart. And uh, I already just wrote down the conclusion. So based on the conclusion, there's no majority leader by the majority rule. For plurality, it's not no. But for Condor set, again, there's no. Okay. And uh, this is related to what, we have, uh, what I asked you to do. So let's compare what will be the choice of the students for their presidential candidate and versus the choice. So those students are minors, so they are not uh, the voting population. So let's see if there will be a difference. So this is the example. Okay. So they made this uh, survey. Metro, it's a So there's a little difference between ours because there are only four candidates here. But I consider it to have all. Because I have a brain paper or something. So I decided to include all. Because if I include five, how many different possible drafts can we have? 120, right? But still, let's see what will happen. Uh, so in this uh, preference table, so there's no majority winner. So the plurality winner was won by race law, and then for the father said there's no reason. So I think they're still tallying your votes. We have a lot of okay, that, okay. So, uh, but before we go to that, you can ask, uh, we ask our students to do this, to blog whatever they're thinking of. So uh, we can ask them to design a voting system. Actually, this one, it can be more than a block. It can be a project, okay? And it, it would be, you can have more than one student uh, group or get more than one student in this project to design a voting system with the degrees for the choice and project. And you can also combine topics. Like for example, uh, if you read with the voting system, the different uh, patterns with the voting system. So in the end, uh, what we usually try to ask our students is to combine all those topics. So we would appreciate, we tell our students that we appreciate it more if we combine topics with their project. Okay? Uh, the students uh, really like this topic. I think it's obvious because there is not much difficult mathematical computation. All you have to do is count. So this is a different subject matter where in you don't only do math but you also see how they think. So you'll be asking more uh, of their opinions. Okay, so uh, what we can like this is I ask them to think about which one is their best voting method. And then when they came into the class the next meeting, I asked them for their best voting method and then I grouped them into their choice. And then they talked about why they chose that voting method. And at the end, they were, they were trying to defend why their method was the best voting method. So it's more on and This topic is uh, not more on computation. Computation plus their opinion. So uh, let's see our results. plus one up to this part. So 
So what would be the total here? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so 15. And then, for the next one, the first place vote here, we have 1 plus 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 15, 20, 20, oh. <laughs> Thank you. 